All the demigods offer prayers to Lord Brahma whenever there's some trouble in, in the universe. They have to come and see Lord Brahma and get help from him. We know before the appearance of Lord Krishna, the earth was overburdened with many demonic Kshatriya kings. So Mother Bhumi is the deity of this planet. She was very grief stricken. She was in a lot of su she was suffering a lot because of all these demonic kings. So she went to see Lord Brahma and she asked Lord Brahma to help. But Lord Brahma didn't know what to do, so he prayed, he went and prayed to uh, Lord Vishnu. He stood, on, he stood on the shore of the milk ocean and Lord Vishnu told him that I'm going to come in the earth planet and I will take birth in the Yadu dynasty. You can all go and take your birth there. So in this way, the different demigods, they all appeared in Krishna's pastimes. And Lord Brahma, one day he came and he saw Lord Krishna in the fields of Vrindavan with all the cowherd boys and with the calves and Lord Krishna was playing like a little child. And Lord Brahma was trying to understand how this little child could be my master. How can he be the Supreme Lord? Of course, at this time, Lord Krishna had already killed some demons. He'd already killed Putana, he'd already killed Bakasura and Trinavata. And he killed Aga, Agasura, the big, huge demon Aga. So Brahma wanted to see more powers of Krishna. He thought, this little child very powerful. So he tried the trick and he stole away the cowherd boys and the cows from Krishna. So Krishna, what does Krishna, Krishna thought, if I go back to Vrindavan without the cowherd boys and without the cows, the people in Vrindavan will be very worried. They'll think, how, why I let that happen? Why did I let somebody take them all away? Where did they go? They would be broken hearted. So Krishna 
So Krishna decided he would take their place, so he expanded himself and he became all the calves and all the cowherd boys. And when they went back to Vrindavan, nobody knew. Nobody knew that Brahma had stolen everybody away and that Krishna had expanded himself. So all the gopis, they had Krishna for their son, but they didn't know it. And all the cows, they had Krishna for their calf, but they didn't know it. So this went on for one year, because one moment of Brahma's time is one year on this planet. Brahma had taken everybody away, it just take, went away for a moment, it came back after one moment, it was one year on this planet. For... The only person who knew was Balarama. Balarama, one day he noticed something is going on here. The day, the day which Lord Brahma had taken all the cowherd boys, that day Lord Balaram was not there. Lord Balaram was kept back by his mother, Rohini, because it was his birthday. So Rohini was arranging for Balaram's birthday, so he didn't go to the forest that day. One day, when Krishna and Balaram were herding the cows by Govardhan Hill, all the cows, the big cows, were up on the top of the Govardhan Hill. And they saw all the calves at the bottom of the Govardhan Hill. And all the big cows, they came running down to greet all the small calves. The cows have natural affection for the calves and they wanted to give their milk for the calves. But these calves were already grown up, they were not so small, and they didn't need their mother's milk. So the cowherd men were up on Govardhan Hill and they were trying to take care of the cows. And when the cows ran down the hill, they became very angry. They thought, oh no, these cows, they've all run down the hill. They shouldn't run down the hill. They're going to lose all their milk. They're going to feed all their milk to their calves. Oh no, there'll be no milk tonight. The cowherd men were in a bad mood. Jabba, 
ला आज बेल का कल की दूध नहीं ना वाने रा चिंता में पड़े की की ना तो मैंने करी थी बात तो दूध देरू अब बात चार ले तो दूध को धुन भारी रा प्रेम ले करता कि दूध को धुन भारी रा उधर लेते हमारे दूध के लाने को लगी उधर आए तो ग्वाल वाले सोचे कि ला आज तो दूध रहने वाले ना वाने रा चिंता में पड़े But by the time the cowherd men came down the hill and they met all the young cowherd boys, they became very affectionate to the cowherd boys and they were hugging the cowherd boys and they were being very nice to them. So Balaram, Lord Balaram was wondering why these men are so nice to these cowherd boys, I mean, they're not usually so nice. And why are these cows so nice to the calves? They're not usually like that. So Balaram could understand something was going on and he asked Lord Krishna, what's happening here? Why is it like this? And Lord Krishna explained how he'd expanded himself as the cows and all the cowherd boys. So this pastime shows that the person who we love more than anyone is Krishna. You know, we all, in material life, everybody's attached to our body. We like our body very much. We'll try to save our body before anything else. You may, you may let the car break, but you want to save the body. If there's a big fire in the house, we'll try to save our body. But more important than the body is the soul. So people who know about the soul, they will try to save, they will try to do something good for the soul. They will not worry about the body. And when somebody understands the soul properly, they'll know that this soul is just a part of the Supreme Soul, Lord Krishna. So the person who we really love is actually not the body, but Krishna. We see people, they spend a lot of money on the body, they want to make the body look nice, but the body is temporary, it gets old, it's going to die. So 
But still we will spend so much money on the body to decorate it, to dress it, to feed it, to clothe it, to make it healthy. You will spend so much time and money. Some people that are on a higher platform, they understand more about the mind and they like to keep the mind peaceful and calm and they'll do many things to just relax the mind. But higher than the mind is the soul. And so once somebody knows about the soul, they will think about the soul. They will not just think about the body or the mind. And that soul is a tiny part of Lord Sri Krishna. So we want to understand Lord Krishna. We want to develop our relationship with Lord Krishna. So Lord Brahma, he saw, he came back a moment later and he saw all the cows and all the cowherd boys were still there. And he thought, how could they still be there? I took them away. He didn't know Lord Krishna had expanded himself. And when Lord Brahma came to see the cows, then Krishna revealed that the cows were all forms of Vishnu. Are you ball? Yes, Mara, excuse me. I have been hearing other outside sound, so I'm waiting to mute them. Yeah. Okay. So. Lord Krishna revealed, when Lord Brahma came to see all the cows and coward boys, Lord Krishna revealed that they were all Vishnu. He showed forearm forms of Vishnu everywhere. And then Lord Krishna arranged also many demigods also appeared and they were all worshipping Krishna and all different living entities appeared and they were all worshipping Krishna. So Lord Brahma was amazed to see the power of Lord Krishna and he prayed to Lord Krishna to forgive him for his offence. He apologized to Krishna. He said, I'm sorry, I disturb your pastimes. I disturb your activities here in the forest where you're having pastimes with your devotees. Uh, 
ग्वाल बाजे संगा लीला रच गढ़ते हुए नहीं थे तो लीला ना मलिक इसमें बिग ना डाले बने रहा छमाई आज ना गढ़ते हुए नहीं थे ब्रह्मा जी and so Lord Brahma prayed that in, his, in the future he prayed that he could take a birth in Vrindavan so that he could understand more about the glories of the devotees of Vrindavan who are on, all taking part in Krishna's pastimes. So although Brahma is a big demigod, very important demigod, he prays that in his next life he can take birth in Vrindavan. Of course, we also know that in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, Lord Brahma comes as Haridas Thakur. Yeah, it's explained, Lord Brahma. He prayed to Krishna that he said, I'm very proud because I'm Lord Brahma. So I'm very proud and people will come and respect me and I get very proud. So I want to become humble. So please in your next incarnation give me a low birth so that I can become humble. <laughs> And so as Hari Das, he's born in a Mohammedan family and he's very, so he's very humble, he doesn't get in the temples and he's, he just sits and chants the holy name. And then another demigod who also took part in Krishna's pastimes was Indra. He, was, he had also become proud and he got upset when the, when the people of Vrindavan didn't offer the yagya for Indra. And he even tried to destroy all the people of Vrindavan. He tried to inundate all Vrindavan and all the cows and all the bridge buses. He wanted to kill them all by the the flood and the, the big storm. But Krishna took away his pride. Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill and defeated him. So even Lord Shiva also became bewildered by Lord Krishna. Lord Shiva wanted to understand Lord Krishna's Maya. So Krishna appeared in the form of Mahini Murti, the most attractive woman. And Lord Shiva became mad after her. Of course, Lord Shiva has his own wife, 
He has his own wife, but when he saw Mohini Murti, he was attracted to her and he chased after her. And sometimes even Lord Shiva was fighting against Krishna. Lord Shiva was, he was guarding the, the home of his devotee, uh, some uh, Asura, uh, what was the name? Uh, no, uh, there was this uh, Bali, Bali Maharaj's, uh, son, one of the sons of Bali Maharaj, uh, he had a thousand arms. And Sasarajan? No. No. He had a thousand arms. He was uh, Banasura. Banasura. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, Banasura. Yeah. Banasura. Banasura. He, Lord Shiva is Banasura is a great devotee of Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva was guarding the home of Banasura. And Lord Krishna came to attack Banasura because Banasura had a, arrested Lord Krishna's grandson, Aniruddha. Hmm. And so Lord even so Lord Shiva sometimes he forgets his position, although he's a devotee of Krishna, sometimes he forgets and he, he's fighting against Krishna. So we can understand how powerful Krishna's energies is that can bewilder the mind of even these greatest demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma and Lord Indra. If we want to understand Lord Krishna, the only way we can understand him is by engaging in his devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting. So here in the prayer, Prahlad Maharaj is offering to Lord Nishringa Dev, he said, even these devotees who, they, they may have been studying the Vedic rituals, they study the Vedas for a long time, but they don't make advancement. But if they do devotional service, then they advance very quickly. Yeah, study the Vedas, the people who study the Vedas all for many, many years, they study, try to get the knowledge of the Vedas. It's very difficult to know Krishna from the Vedas. But when they do devotional service, then very quickly they can understand the Vedas. Not, not, they don't just want to understand the Vedas, they want to understand who is behind the Vedas. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vedanta Krit Veda Ved Eva Chaham Sarvasya Chaham Ridisa Nivisto Matatsmiti Agyanam Apohanam Cha Veda Ischa Sarveraham Eva Vidya Vedanta Krit Veda Ved Eva Chaham 
Krishna is saying, by all the Vedas I am to be known, I am the author, I am the compiler of the Vedas. So, just by doing Vedic rituals, you don't make much advancement. It's a waste of time. The benefit of doing Vedic rituals is just simply some material benefit which attaches us to the material world. So when we do devotional service, we don't have to worry about doing ritualistic rituals anymore. Madhavendra Puri was a great devotee. He was a Vaishnava sannyasi. And he, he, he says, oh, he said, I know I'm supposed to offer prayers three times a day, but he said, I'm sorry, I can't do that anymore. And I'm supposed to bathe three times a day also. I'm not going, I can't do that anymore also. I, I, I offer my obeisances, but I can't do it. And I'm not able to worship the demigods or the forefathers anymore. But he said, wherever I go, I can only remember Lord Krishna, the descendant of the Yadu dynasty. And wherever I go, I can remember Lord Krishna, the enemy of Kamsa, and by remembering him, I can free myself from the bondage of material life. So Madhavendra Puri said, that's enough for me. I don't need any more. I don't need any material benefits. Right, neophyte devotees, neophyte devotees, they have to offer prayers three times a day. Yeah, they have to get up early in the morning, they have to take their bath in the morning. And they have to offer their obeisances to the forefathers and the demigods. But when somebody becomes a devotee, then they don't have to do these things anymore. Because he's a devotee, he's already engaged in the highest thing, devotional service. Right. 
But if somebody is not a devotee, it doesn't matter what you do, all these other things are not going to help you. In Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 2, it is described there. Dharma svanishtita pumsa vishvakshena ktastuya notpadaya dhyadiratim shrama eva hi kevalam. The duties done by all men are just useless labor if they do not help you to get attraction for the Supreme Lord. So for, for a devotee, it's not important to do all these rituals. He just needs bhakti, devotion. Krishna himself says in the Bhagavad Gita, in the 11th chapter and in the 18th chapter, that he can only be understood by devotion. Krishna says in the 18th chapter, Bhakti Amama Bijanati Yavam Yas Chasmin Tatvataha Tatomam Tatvato Gyadva Vishate Tadanantaram. This is Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, text number 55. It's a very important... Krishna is saying, only by devotion can I be understood, not by any other way. And by devotion one can enter into my pastimes, take part in my activities. So sometimes the Mayabadis, they think Krishna, because Krishna said he enters into me, they think, oh, it becomes one, he merges. But no, we keep our, we keep our identity as an individual. Prabhupada gives a nice example. He says, just like in Vrindavan, there's many parrots. You see the green parrot, and the green parrot flies into the, the green tree. You don't know, you don't know the parrots in there in the tree, but the parrot goes into the tree and you lose the parrot in the tree. The, pa the parrot goes into the tree to eat the fruit, to enjoy. The same way devotee enjoys in the spiritual world with Krishna, taking part in Krishna's Leela. So we should understand it's only by devotional service that we can come to know Krishna, no other way, not by karma, not by jnana, not by yoga, only by bhakti. People may do these other things, they may do karma or jnana or yoga, 
But that's not going to get them the goal of life. That's not going to get them love of God. That's only going to give some temporary benefit. By karma, one can elevate oneself to the higher planets, you can go up to Brahmaloka and enjoy the life in the heavenly planets. By jnana, you can get impersonal liberation, you can go in the Brahma Jyoti. And by yoga, if you do yoga, you can get the yoga siddhis, you can get the different asta siddhis, different powers where you can do so many unnatural, mystical things. But if we want to get the goal of life, if we want to get love for Krishna, we have to do bhakti yoga. So people who are actually intelligent, they will, they will not waste their time just studying the Vedas. They're going to take up bhakti yoga. And we have our authorities to guide us. We have the Mahajans, the great Mahajans that are there to guide us. And Prahlad Maharaj, he is also one of the Mahajans. So Prahlad Maharaj is encouraging all the everybody you take up this devotional service. You don't have to become a big scholar. You don't get Krishna consciousness just by having a degree or being a scholar. Arjuna is not a Brahmana. Arjuna is a devotee. The important qualification is devotee. It's not the birth. It's not being a Brahmana by birth. It's not birth which is important. It's not the education which is important. But it's the devotion. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna Himself says, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, nice Trigunya Bhavarjuna, that the Vedas deal with the three modes of nature, rise above the modes, be transcendental to them. So this Krishna consciousness movement is following the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj wants everyone to engage in devotional service. We are trying to encourage everyone. 
कृष्ण भावना जो प्रहलाद महाराज जी को शिक्षा जो हमें जो कृष्ण भावना हमें पाँच प्रहलाद महाराज जी को शिक्षा हमें अपना प्रहलाद महाराज जी को शिक्षा द्वारा शिक्षा द्वारा हमें भगवान जान प्रयास कोशिश कर भगवान जान सक If we simply do devotional service, then Krishna will be pleased, and when Krishna is pleased, He can reveal Himself to us. Then, when we don't need to do all these austerities, we don't need to do all the tapasya, we just have to engage in devotional service. So this is the message of Prahlad Maharaj. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna, Dandavad Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Dandavad Pranam, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Dandavad Pranam. Prabhu Ji, the Maharaj has told us that the Maharaj has told us that the Ishwar Puri has told us that the three Sandhya Pitri has told us that the Maharaj has told us that the Maharaj has told us that the Maharaj has told us ब्राह्मण दीक्षा होता के लिए त्रिसंख्या करने मंत्र दिन जा रहा ईश्वर पुरी ले जो त्यागे को मंत्र एवढे योगी बिंदु ही होगा ईश्वर पुरी ने माधव बिंदु पुरी होला नहीं आ महाराज जी प्रभु इस मेंशन दे इस क्वेश्चन दे यू हैव मेंशन बिफोर दैट माधव बिंदु पुरी वाज ही हैज नॉट फॉलोइंग द त्रिसंध्य so that three sandhya is the same what Vaishnava Guru Jan give to his disciple. That three sandhya is three sandhya mantra and that three sandhya is same. Which is Madhavendra Puri doesn't like to follow anymore. Yeah, Madhavendra Puri is not following the ritualistic Karmakandi prayers. And Nimaya Prabhu is asking that, that three sandhya which is Madhavinda Puri doesn't like to follow. Well, the, just like we have Tri Sandhya in our, yes. in our Guru Vastika, we talk about Tri Sandhya, right? Yeah. We talk about the, the Tri Sandhya, it's there that we worship this, uh, Yasha Prasad, Bhagavad Prasad, O Yasha Prasad, Nagati Topi, Dayam Stuvam Tashya, Yasha Tri Sandhyam, Tri Sandhya. Pandey Guru Shri Charana Ravindam. So we also have three, every in the day there are three sandhyas, morning, midday, and evening. We chant Gayatri Mantra, three sandhya. Yeah. So is he, he's not following the ritualistic prayers, the Karma Kandi prayers. <laughs> So we have to know. Does he follow that three sandhya? Does he follow the three sandhya? Yeah. Well, he'll follow the devotee prayers. He'll 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 chant. He may chant Gayatri. Right, we follow the, that, we, fo we chant Gayatri three times a day. You can also worship your deity three times a day, morning, midday and evening. Yeah. 
Nothing wrong with that. But we don't do the, the ritualistic prayers, which are just for karma kandi, material benefit. But he mentions for neophytes it's important to do. So we're also, you know, we're not very advanced, so you can do it. There's not, it's not wrong to do prayers. If you do prayers, offer prayers to Krishna three times a day, very nice. Offer prayers to get pure devotion, that's allowed. We encourage devotees, offer prayers. We're not advanced devotees, we're neophyte devotees. So for neophytes these things are important. But Madhavendra Puri, he's, a, he's on a higher platform, he's on the platform of Raga Bhakti. He doesn't have to follow all the rules and regulations. Sometimes he may follow, sometimes not. He's not obliged because he's a very, very advanced devotee. Because of Madhavendra Puri, Lord Chaitanya took initiation in that same line of disciplic succession because Lord Chaitanya appreciated Madhavendra Puri as a great devotee. Because Madhavendra Puri has Raga Bhakti, he has spontaneous devotion, he's always thinking of Krishna. We have to try, we have to force ourselves to think of Krishna. That's why we have to chant prayers, it helps us to think of Krishna. But Madhavendra Puri, he, he doesn't need to do like that. He doesn't have to force himself to think of Krishna. He's naturally Krishna conscious. He doesn't, he doesn't forget Krishna, so it's, he's always thinking of Krishna. Mm -hmm. I read, a, I read in a, this uh, Brajavka, Brajasanta, yes, Madhavindavir is the one of the highest devotees in our Sampradaya. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. He's, he brought the seed of spontaneous devotion to Krishna into the Sampradaya. Before Madhavendra, before Madhavendra Puri, they didn't have this. Yeah, the seed of that ecstatic love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
When Madhavendra Puri was leaving the body, he was reciting a verse speaking about separation from Krishna. He would recite a verse, a special verse about separation from Krishna, a verse which was spoken by Radharani. And it said this verse is so deep, the meaning is so deep, it can only be understood by Lord Chaitanya, Madhavendra Puri and Lord Krishna. So that lets you know what kind of devotee Madhavendra Puri is. He's such a great devotee. Mm -hmm. when, when Lord Chaitanya would meet a disciple of Madhavendra Puri, Lord Chaitanya would offer obeisances to him. Because Madhav, Lord Chaitanya's guru was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Ishwara Puri was the disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So when Lord Chaitanya met any disciple of Madhavendra Puri, he would treat them like his guru. Krishna, Arukasa Yuki, Prashna Jha, Nima Prabhu, Bhaya Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. No more questions. Arukai Prashna. Prabhuji, Jo Brahmaji, Bara Mazat Mahek, Munja Rabani Wa, Pratham Ji Bara Bani, जो ब्रह्मा भी मोहन लुला हमले आगे सुनियो ब्रह्मा जी की कारण ले मोहित होने वाला कि न वाणी वहाँ तक गर्भस्तु थी करना वाणी स्वयं माहौन वाला जो रा कृष्ण लाई यो मेरो भगवान होइन वंदे कौसरी मोहित होने वाला मारा जी वन मो क्वेश्चन वास कम दैट ब्रह्मा जी इस ब्रह्मा जी इस द वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट जीवा � uh, in an illusion that Krishna is not supreme, why he become an illusion? That question is. Well, that wasn't his. His illusion was not that Krishna is not the supreme. He didn't have illusion about that, but he just wanted to see more pastimes of Krishna. <laughs> He had seen Krishna do, he had he'd seen Krishna kill these different demons and he, he wanted to see more pastimes, he wanted to see how he would behave, what he would do. Actually, the followers of Madhvacharya, the followers of Madhvacharya, they don't accept the, this pastime. 
because they, they, they're followers of Madhvacharya, they come in the, the same line of disciplic succession as we do from Brahma. So they say, no, Brahma couldn't have done this, he wouldn't do this. And so they don't accept this pastime, they just ignore it. Madhva. Hmm. But we accept it and we say, yeah, you know, this is a lot of Brahma's pastime that you know, Krishna is very, he, he bewilders the minds, even of the great demigods. Even Lord Shiva gets bewildered. Lord Shiva, he's not a jiva. Brahma is a jiva. But Lord Shiva is not a jiva. And even Lord Shiva gets bewildered. Hmm. So Lord Krishna, he's, he, he has that he has this inconceivable potency, achincha shakti, but he has inconceivable powers, even beyond even the powers of Brahma to understand, and even Shiva cannot understand the power of Lord Krishna. Yeah, we see Lord Shiva bewildered by Mohini Murti, although Lord Shiva has a, you know, beautiful wife, Bhavani, but still somehow he became attracted to this Mohini Murti. Lord Shiva, he is, he is very sober-minded, he is very mentally controlled. There is a story that Lord Shiva was meditating and the demigods, they wanted to get the semen from Lord Shiva. So they produced this very beautiful woman from the heavenly planets and she came there to try to seduce Lord Shiva. Uh, so Lord Shiva was yeah, there's this, it's told in, there's this one drama, Kumar Sambhav. So Lord Shiva's meditating and this demigod, the beautiful woman from the heavenly planet, she comes and she touches Lord Shiva's genital. But Lord Shiva just stays in meditation, he doesn't get distracted. So this is Lord Shiva, he's very sober-minded, he's mentally controlled, but still when he saw Mohini Murti, he was running after her like a madman. Yeah, 
मूर्ति भर अपनी शिवजी को तपस्या भंग भेन तर जब मोहिनी मूर्ति को रूप शिवजी ने देखा खेल शिवजी मोहिनी मूर्ति को पीछे कसरी लग्न भाई एट पागला And Mohini Murti, she went where all the great yogis and sages were, where they were all meditating, and she went there just so that she they could see. Oh, look, see, Lord Shiva is chasing after this woman. She want Lord Krishna arranged like that so that these people would all be taught a lesson that you have to be very careful not to get attracted. devotee but he's not equal to lord krishna bima bishma grandfather bishma he was a brahmachari they wanted them to get married but he wouldn't get married Even Parasuram fought with him. Parasuram is his guru, and Parasuram was telling him, "You should marry this girl. She wants to. You're supposed to marry her. You ruined her marriage. You have to marry her." And Bhishma said, "No, I vowed to be Brahmachari." So he had to fight with Parasuram. <laughs> Mm. So, Parasuram could not defeat Bhishma, so he, he told Bhishma, okay, I can't defeat you, so he said, then you just have to stay, you just stay Brahmachari then, okay. So they were they were saying to Bhishma, "You're the greatest brahmachari," but Bhishma said, "No." He said, "I'm not the greatest brahmachari." He said, "You know who the greatest brahmachari is? The greatest brahmachari is Krishna." And they were shocked. They said, "What well, Krishna? He's a, he's always with the gopis. Got so many girlfriends." But Bhishma said, "No, actually, he's very renounced. He's not attached to any of these women." Sometimes he's dancing Rasa Leela with so many gopis, then he would just go away and leave them all. So Krishna is the greatest brahmachari. Bhishma could understand that and he offered his respects to Lord Krishna. Okay. Any other question? Hare Krishna, Guru Bhaya Dhanat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Paru Ji. Hajur, Hare Krishna, Dhanam. Hajur, Mali Ali, Tehmi Mali, Sode, Sreni Ava, Jor, Barma Ji, Kota Lila, Bhagat Ko Lila, Sunna Ko Lagi, Kosa Gharnu Vakko, Vandu Vani. 
तर इंद्र इंद्र देवको पनि एकचोटी अब त्यस्तो भएको छ नि उहाँले भगवानलाई विचार गरेर अब के अरे सात दिन पानी बस्नु भयो हो त्यो त्यस्तो पनि भगवानकै लीला जान्नको लागि त्यस्तो गर्नु भएको कि के हो भन्ने नि यस्तो सोध्नु भागो धर्मको पनि क्वेशन द महाराजजी Brahma ji has done that leela because he would like to see the Krishna leela. But why uh, is Indra has done also this uh, storm and big raining, flooded, also is the same as Brahma? Or no, Indra, Indra was proud. Indra, Indra was angry because Krishna stopped doing the Indra Yagya. There was, you know, the people of Vrindavan were going to do Indra Yagya, but Krishna told them not to do it. Krishna said, you don't need to do Indra Yaga, just demigod worship, it's not necessary, you don't need to do this in the worship of demigods. They said, we'll get rain, we don't need to worship Indra. So Indra became very proud, he became very angry and he sent his clouds, some, Vart some Vartarka clouds to in inundate the whole of Vrindavan and destroy everybody. So, Lord Krishna had to, he picked up the Govardhan Hill to protect everybody. And it gave, it gave Krishna an opportunity to be with all the gopis for seven days and nights. They could all be together. So many purposes were served by the one thing. Krishna was able to show everyone the greatness of Govardhan Hill. And he was able to crush the pride of Indra, make Indra humble. So it was different from Brahma. And after, after Krishna had picked up Govardhan Hill, then Indra came to apologize and he came to apologize, he came along with Surabhi Kao. So Krishna forgave him and told him to go back to heaven and stop, stop all of this nonsense. So Indra also came in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes to see Lord Chaitanya. Mm. 
Okay. Okay, so we have the no more questions. Then we'll stop here. I think no more questions, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so thank Brad Banu Prabhu for translation. Thank you very much for your good, uh, nice, beautiful lecture, Maharaji. And thank all the devotees. Shri yes, thank you, Prabhupada Prabhuji. Yes, thank Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gorbhakti Vrinda ki. Jai.